Happy Sunday, Trinity Church. Thank you so much for joining us online. We are thrilled to have you. Please consider sharing the link with a friend and inviting them to join us as well. We have a fantastic service lined up just for you. Let's start by entering into a time of worship together. Join us now. Who has the final say? Jehovah has the final say. Who has the final say? Jehovah has the final say. No matter what the doctor
觉。Christ is my firm foundation, the rock on which I stand. When everything around me is shaking. And I never be more glad. And I put my faith in Jesus, 'cause He's never let me down. He's faithful through generations, so why would He fail now? He won't. I've still got joy. I've still got joy in chaos. I got peace that makes no sense. I won't be going under. I'm not held by my own strength. 'Cause I build my life on Jesus. 'Cause He's never left. So why would he fail now? He won't. No, he won't. He won't. He won't fail. He won't fail. He won't fail. He won't.
we're so glad you're here. My name is Robin Wilkerson, and I am one of the senior co-pastors. And right now, I have the honor of encouraging us in our giving, and that is another form of worship right here as we gather. Proverbs 19:17. Kindness to the poor is a loan to the Lord, and he will give a reward to the lender. Now let's let, stop. Let's just take a minute, a little Bible lesson. What did that verse say? Kindness to the poor is a loan to the Lord and he, God, will give a reward to the lender. That's a place to applaud, raise your hand, dance. Because Trinity Church has core values, has a mission statement, and those three key mission goals are to reach the lost with the good news of Jesus, help the poor, and teach the abundant life. That means that God finds us, we reach, and then He changes us. Our mission is outreach, compassion, and abundance. But week after week, God allows us the honor to make up the difference in people's lives. Aren't you glad we're part of the answer? This level of expectation for abundance is who we are. It's who you are. It's who we are as a church. And we know that when we obey God's word, he promises he's going to reward us. Now that is not a coincidence, and it's here that we are changed and we have the honor and opportunity to participate in changing other lives. God promises he'll reward those who do what he's called them to do. Are you ready? Are you ready to worship the Lord with your giving and be part of the amazing answer? Would you raise your digital device? knowing that God is with us in our financial future. Father, we lift up your tithe and our offerings and to bring a tenth of what you've given us systematically as we bring ourselves to the altar of faith. Thank you, God, that we are able to participate together, to do more together than we can do apart. And all God's people said, amen, amen. God bless you as you give. History shapes humanity. Humanity has shaped history. One way or another, everybody has been shaped by both. Every single one of the 8 billion people on the planet are in some small or big way affected by certain factors, such as gender, age, place of birth, heritage, yes, even skin color. All these factors are experienced at times as either a burden or a blessing, or sometimes both. February is Black History Month. In television, cultural institutions, media, and why not in the house of God, we pay attention to the events and experiences that matter. We want to pay tribute and celebrate what it means to be a Black person today and throughout history. We're still learning. We're still listening. History is still being shaped. I've been walking with my face turned to the sun. Weight on my shoulder, a bullet in my gun. Oh, I got eyes in the back of my head Just in case I have to run I do what I can when I can while I can for my people While the clouds roll back and the stars fill the night 
that's when I'm gonna stand up, take my people with me, together we are going to a brand new home, far across the river, you hear freedom calling, calling me to answer, gonna keep on keeping on, I can feel it. What a beautiful way to celebrate Black History Month. Thank you, worship team. Well, we want to welcome you. How about you jump into the chat and let us know that you are here and where you're watching from. And if you're joining us for the first time, we consider you our VIP guest. If you would, please complete our digital connect card by texting CONNECT to 66866 to let us know that you joined us today. We are so thankful for you. And as always, we wanna let you know that we are praying for each and every one of you. Thank you to those who submitted your prayer request last week. We are praying for healing for Marsha, Ambet, and Teresa. We're praying for jobs for Aurora, Venetia, 
and Sandy, financial provision for Caroline and Shirley, and so many other prayer requests. So, let us know how we can pray for you by texting Let's Pray to 66866. Trinity Church is here for you. We also want to hear what you're thankful for. Let us know what God has done for you or how he has answered your prayers by texting THANKFUL to 66866. And don't forget our weekly live Zoom prayer meetings every Wednesday at 6 a.m. Simply text STAY CONNECTED to 66866 for all details. We are also in connect group season. There are virtual and in-person meetings with everything from prayer groups, activity groups, Bible studies, and so much more. So check out our groups today by texting connect groups to 66866. Well, summer camp is just around the corner, guys, and we have some breaking news. Let's go to our new studio. The date for early summer camp registration has been confirmed. It will take place Friday, March 8th, between the times of 6 p.m. and 8 p.m. It will happen here at Trinity Church Christian Academy. For this day only, the price of summer camp registration will be $35. <laughs> Are you ready? Three, two, one. For Gen 2050 and Freedom School, register now. Thank you, Savannah. So mark your calendars, March 8th from 6 to 8 p.m. at Trinity Christian Academy. Well, today we continue in our series on relationships with Pastor Taylor Wilkerson from Trinity Church, New York. So let's get ready take out your notes, or download the notes from the Trinity Church app as we prepare to hear God's word today. Hey, I'm so thankful that you're with us today. My name is Taylor, and this is my lovely wife, Kristen. And we have the honor, we have the privilege, uh, the opportunity of being the lead pastors here. If it's your first time here, we just want to welcome you and let you know that we love you. We're so thankful that you're with us today. I know the first time going to church can be kind of weird uh, and, uh, and kind of intimidating, so we understand that. We just want you to know that you're seen, you're loved, you're believed in. Uh, we're thankful that you're with us. Whether you believe in what we believe or not, God believes in you and we love you. God loves you and we're thankful yeah. you're in the room. I also like to look online and say what's up. I'd like to welcome our Trinity Miami campus and everyone who's joining us online. Friends, can we make some noise for all of our guests and everyone joining us online? Come on, make some noise. Come on, so good. Well, hey, okay. today is kind of a special Sunday and today we're talking about dating. So Kristen and I, are preaching together. And I have coffee on the platform, something I've never done before. Yeah. But you know, I've got four kids. And they all at some point end up in our room. <laughs> I need coffee, you know what yeah. I mean? Like it's just a thing. And you, where, where are my parents at? Any parents in the room? Come on. Can you hear the exhaustion? Like, <laughs> like, like it's so deep, you know what I mean? Like it's, it's chronic true. fatigue at a spiritual soul depth, okay? Yeah. <sighs> Breathe, Taylor. Hey, no, uh, I, I do like to kind of see who's in the room. So th th those are our parents. Um, uh, married couples, those are married, but, but maybe you're married. But everyone who's married, make some noise. Married, married, okay, yeah. Okay. Um, how many of you, you're here, you're, um, you're not married, but you are taken. Okay, come on, taken. You're taken. <laughs> Y'all sound confused. I think. You can, you can figure that out at lunch. You didn't make any, you didn't raise your hand. Yeah. You are taken. <laughs> I don't know, Emma. Are we taking you? Yeah. I, I, that was d the defining the relationship conversation for some of you. That, like, there is someone who just raised their hand. They're like, I guess I'm taken. <laughs> Looks like I'm taken. Yeah, it was, yeah, good, it was news. good news. Okay, where's our single people at, though? It's good. That was pretty good. good. Yeah. I remember, I remember, you know, today we were talking about dating, and I, and I shared a little bit last week, but I do remember meeting Kristen. If you've heard our story, you know, I, I like to say it, but I did meet her at a Cold Stone Creamery. And uh, Cold Stone, you know, they've got three sizes. It's small, medium, large, but Cold Stone is so much better than that. They've got like it, love it, gotta have it. And I do remember meeting you and being like, I gotta have this girl. I love, I love this it. girl. And, and, and I've we, heard we did. that a billion times. I gotta tell you, it never gets old. It, does it? Good. I oh, like that awesome. joke. It's yeah, cute. you never get old either, babe. I love you. Yeah, you're awesome. 
I got I gotta be honest, guys. I love this woman more than ever. And, uh, and, and, and I find that the longer we're together, the more in love with you I am. Everything gets better. Our friendship gets better. Our partnership gets better. Our love gets better, if you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> everything gets, everything gets, I just we'll made some of y'all uncomfortable. We'll be talking about that next week. Yeah, we'll be talking about sex yeah. next week, sorry. Um, yeah. Uh, some of you, you just opened up your calendar app and like made an appointment for making sure I'm in church next week <laughs> talking about sex. <laughs> I love that. Um, but I do remember meeting you and, uh, and uh, you've heard the story if you've been coming here for a while, but for those of you who don't know us, uh, Chris and I, we met that night, we hit it off and, and it was, it was like, like the chemistry, the sparks, the connection, the fun, the attraction, it was all there. And at the end of the night, she said, well, it was so good to meet you. I've got to go hang out with my boyfriend now. And I was like, no. And um, I got completely friend zoned. Okay. I, I got complete. Anyone been in the friend zone? I got completely put in the friend zone. And today, I'm here to encourage some brothers, some sisters to get from the friend zone to the end zone, okay? <laughs> to get out of that pocket and to get to, to where God wants us to be. But uh, uh, today, uh, Chris and I, we prepared a sermon for you. And you know, it is Super Bowl Sunday. We're having a little bit of fun and we are talking about dating. So today we're talking about improving your game. Say improving your game. Improving your game. Elbow someone and say, you need to improve your game. I just started a fight. I'm sorry about that. Uh, 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 poke someone else and say, you need to improve your game. Today, today we're talking about improving, improving our game. But the reality yeah. is, Kristen, is that like, like I think the reason that uh, this is so important is because uh, all of us here, I, I talked about it last week. Yeah. I don't need to rehearse it. But for those of us who are looking for a spouse or we're looking uh, th to get married, the yeah. reality is, is it's such a hard thing. And sometimes it feels like we're just from two different planets. Yes, absolutely. And I think it's true. Sometimes it can be like, hey, um, I want to improve my game, but I kind of feel like we're playing totally different sports, okay? And anyone know what I'm talking about? Like men and women, sometimes it's like, I just don't get it. I don't understand why you are the way you are. And um, <laughs> it just happens. And I don't know why I think that's so funny. <laughs> I don't know why you are the way you are. I don't know why you are this way. <laughs> oh, we're going to really fight it out today, I know. Um, yeah, this but, is actually our marriage counseling today. You get to watch it in real time. Yeah, real time marriage counseling. That's fun. We should do that sometime. That would be great. Bring a therapist up and just like talk vulnerably. <laughs> yeah. That'd be I'm like great. crying with snot. <laughs> Yeah, I love it. But we did realize, you know, that um, men and women, of course, we all know this, but just from every standpoint, we are created differently. God created us differently. He has um, knit us together differently, both in our mind, the way we think, but also just biologically, we're different. And um, in all of that, I think it's important to note just a couple things. I wrote them down, just some fun, quick facts about what makes us different today. Um, if it does feel like he's from another planet, here's why. I think this one is funny. Um, he actually does have thicker skin than you. Like, not just like in a fight, but by 25%, men have thicker skin. It our, makes our sense. Our dermis, endodermis, and epidermis is 25% thicker. Yes, that's true. <laughs> And um, sometimes it's like we get our feelings hurt, but he just does. He has thicker skin. Um, even our brains are different. Men have more gray matter in their brains. Women have more white matter in their brains. The gray matter stores information, and the white matter stores connectivity. That's why it can often feel like, hey, why can't you connect all of the dots? Uh, why does it feel like he can't multitask? Yeah, I got my own psychosis issues. Yeah, multitask. I can't single task. You know what I'm talking about? Yes. Any ADHD friends? Okay. It happens sometimes. It's true. And which leads me to the next point that women actually do have better memory centers in their brains. Um, I don't know why it is, but oftentimes men, they can't find anything, right? Yeah. And you know, it's always our fault that they can't find something. Have you ever felt that way? I'm just saying. It's also why women are so good at being like, you always and you never. And guys are like, I don't remember any of that. Yeah. What are you talking about? Yeah, we have like a running list of, you know, <laughs> I, I remember. It's interesting that our brains are literally made differently. Yeah, they're yeah. made differently. And the last one is that men are less sensitive to cold temperatures. And that's why you're always stealing his jacket. Yeah. God so, made it that way to warm you up. Yeah, that's right. 
That's right. So we could that wasn't meant snuggle to be sweet. Close. It was meant to be sensual. Snuggle close. Didn't come out right. I like it. But <laughs> here we are. And we're asking the question, this is the question today, what is dating? How do we define dating? And I like the answer to this question that we wrote down is that dating is not a destination. Dating is not a destination, but it's actually a process for evaluation. Let's just make this a part of our language from now on, even as a church. We're not dating, we're evaluating. That's great. We're on the process of evaluating. And when it comes to evaluation, I mean, I think it's really important to talk about, even when we look at scripture. Totally. Whoa. Yeah. Sorry about that. Well, like, like for single people, I think you understand the pain. Have you ever, have you ever like, like been going through something like, I need to go to the Bible to find answers. So like you're feeling down. So you're like, I need to find joy. So you go to the Bible and look for joy or like yeah. you need like financial help, go to the Bible. Like you can pick any topic in the Bible and there is good advice about it. But have you noticed that there's nothing in the Bible about dating? Have you noticed it's not there? Yeah, it, it's not there. The Bible says nothing about dating. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, because our process of figuring out who we're going to spend the rest of our life with is more cultural than it is biblical. Uh, but, but that's okay. The Bible doesn't talk about dating, but you know what the Bible does talk about? Evaluating. Yeah. And that's what dating is. It's a process you're trying to work through as you're evaluating who it is you're going to spend the rest of your life with. You're, yeah. you're, you're, it's, a, it's a season of evaluating. Like, have you read some of these scriptures? The Bible talks a lot about evaluating. Like Proverbs 25, verse 24. It says, uh, it, it, it says it's better to live in the corner of the roof than in a house shared with a contentious woman. Let me tell you who that was not written for. That wasn't mar- written for the married guy. The married guy's like... Well, now you tell me, you know what I mean? Like, like it, it, that's, not, that's not who it's written for. It's written to the single man who's trying to evaluate who sh- he's going to choose to spend the rest of his life with. What's the advice there? It's kind of simple. If she's, if she's stirring up drama, if she's uh, divisive, argumentative, the Bible is giving good advice and it's saying, hey, as you're evaluating this girl that you're interested in, maybe you don't want to choose the person who is contentious. It's, it's the Bible giving good advice. You're, you're evaluating this person. It, at Proverbs chapter 25 for men, it says, likewise, a city broken into, a, a, a man is like, a man without self-control is like a city broken into without walls. A man without self-control. So in the same way, girls, you're evaluating this guy. Is that cute guy or that, or, or that good guy that, you, that, you're, that you're considering, does he have an anger problem? Does he lash out? Is he uh, verbally or physically abusive? Is he a bully? Well, let me caution you. The Bible is being very clear as you evaluate this person. Be careful if you choose to marry this man because he won't make your home feel safe and he won't make you feel feel safe. So you need to be evaluating. And I love what uh, the Proverbs in the book of the Bible is just filled with so much wisdom about evaluating. And it says the righteous choose their friends carefully. And as you are choosing who it is that you are going to spend the rest of your life with, the fir- what you're doing is you, if you got to be careful. You've got to understand what it is that you are evaluating. And, and that's what this season is. Uh, so what is dating? It, it's, uh, it, it's a process for evaluation. Yeah. Yeah. And and then it comes to this idea. Okay. So if we know that that is what dating is, if we have our definition, right, then the next question is, well, who, who am I actually evaluating? Who, who's the kind of person that is, you know, allowed to even be in this process. And the first thing I would, I would encourage you is to make sure that you're on the same team. You're on the same team. And I want to share actually Hebrews 12. Hebrews 12 says this, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and the perfecter of our faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame and said, Sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. And if I can be honest today, I think so many of us in this dating season, we've grown weary and we've lost heart simply yeah. because we've been evaluating people who aren't even supposed to be on the same team as you. 
When we're talking about the same team, let me be very clear. We're talking about people who have the finish line as Jesus. People who have their focus on the perfecter and the pioneer of their faith. We've got to make it very clear today that evaluating someone outside of that perspective, of that game, is someone you shouldn't even really be spending your time with. Yeah. You're playing different teams. What makes you think it's going to work out? So you're looking for someone who's on the same team as you. But not only that, you're looking for two other things, and that's character and chemistry. Right? Character and chemistry. I I think that's so easy because I think as Christians, um, it's important that what we're saying about being on the same team, that you understand that before you go down the road, before your feelings develop, Before you fall in love, don't let yourself get there and find out a year down the road, oh, turns out the person I'm now in love with doesn't have the same end goal as me, doesn't actually love Jesus, doesn't actually believe in what I believe in. And that's why it's important that the same team, Team Jesus is kind of like... Relevant. Yeah, but like, but like, but like... If that's not the end goal, then when the next two fall into place, if that first one's not there, you're going to get to the wrong destination. But as Christians, it's also the opposite can happen. Sometimes you get Christians and you get super spiritual. Like, I'm just looking for a Christian, just a Christian man, just loves God. And it's like, yeah, but like you're not attracted to him. And like, he's like, like he doesn't, he doesn't pass the J's test. You know, he doesn't have a job, you know, like doesn't like, like Jesus check job fall fail. You know, like it just doesn't work. Yeah. Um, You've got to have chemistry, you've got to have character, and you've got to make sure that Jesus is first. And, and, and I do think it's just important to say that the chemistry thing should be there. I think we can get so spiritual, and, and we could be like, well, you know, I don't really care. Uh, looks are not that important to me. And if, I, and if you say that to me, I want you to know that the first thing I hear is, this person's got a lying problem. Um, and then uh, and then the second thing, <laughs> yeah, this person's got a lying self-righteous problem. And um, Looks are important. Yeah, like this idea of chemistry, like if you... There's two couples that are, and neither are who you want to be. You don't want to be the couple that you, you, your chemistry is on, like amazing. You're best friends. You laugh together. You love each other. You can't, you can't separate. You, you, you want to be making out. You want to be together. You, th- th- this couple, they, uh, they go down the road as best friends, but they never get to the deeper level of the relationship and they never talk about values and virtues and the type yeah. of home they want to raise. And, and they never get to the, the, the deeper issues of honesty and, and character. So they get married and then they, they're awakened with a rude awakening that, yeah, their chemistry was great, but you know what? Like our values were not aligned at all. And it brings heart, heartache and, 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 uh, and issues to a marriage that could have been solved during the evaluating process. Yeah. Then there's the couple who's like, hey, the character and the depth and the values, they're all there. But the reality is, is the attraction is not. And the fun, well, he's, he doesn't, no, we don't laugh together, but he's such a good guy. And everyone says we should stay together. Yeah. And this couple gets, gets married and then the passion wanes and the intimacy and the friendship it yeah. isn't there. You're, you're evaluating someone. And the first thing you're evaluating them on is, hey, are you trying to cross the same finish line as I am? What's the finish line we're trying to cross? I'm trying to get to heaven yeah. and I'm trying to hear my creator say, well done, good and faithful servant. Yeah. With your business, with your family, with your marriage, you lived your life for me. That's the finish line. Yeah. I'm only going to get in the race with someone who's trying to get there. Yeah. Then it's, all right, do they have the character? Do we have the chemistry? If all of those things line up, yeah. pull the trigger, brother. <laughs> and I want to say this too. I think it's okay. And I think sometimes in, um, in church or maybe even in Christian circles, um, we can miss the fact that there are times when you're on different levels of spirituality than the person that you're with, right? So, and, and typically, let me just be really, really honest, typically women um, have more spiritual maturity or have been following Jesus longer than sometimes the men that they're dating. It's just kind of the trend that I see in church a lot. Of course, it's true on different parts, but one thing that I do want you to look for, though, is that he does, yes, he follows Jesus. So let's say he followed Jesus, follows Jesus and he's told you that he's a Christian, okay? But you really want to 
try to figure out, okay, well, what does this okay, look does like mean? in his life? Yeah. Because he might be a Christian, but if he's asking you to come home with him and sleep with him on your first date, that's a red flag. Because he might be a Christian by label, but not in virtue and who he really is. I'm going to throw a flag on the play right there and say that you need to move on. Move on. But maybe you're with him and you are just a little more spiritually mature, but you're looking for spiritual warmth. You're yeah. making sure that there's growth happening in his life, that That's he great. is continuing to follow Jesus, that he is seeking God, that he is maybe learning more about prayer. There should be progress. There should be growth in his spiritual maturity. Yeah, I love yeah. that word. Spirit, you're looking for someone spiritually warm. They're open, receptive, and obedient to God's leading. They actually really want good. to live their life for Jesus. They aren't just at church because of you. Maybe that's how they got to church. But now they actually serve God because they want a relationship with God. Yeah, and that's, that's just it. a huge deal. It's a huge deal. Yeah. Um, and then so, it, it goes from, okay, we know that it's evaluating. We know who we're looking for. But then what today, it is, who it is. we really want to talk about the how. The how. And uh, we've got seven different plays to improve your game today. Seven different plays. I really... Get the X's I'm, and O's I'm, out. I'm leaning in today to the theme. I like it. But um, how are we going to date? Um, we're going to list them off quickly, and then we're going to go through each of them. But the first one is uh, prayerfully, with clarity. Number three is autonomy, purity. Number five, graciously. Number six, in community. And lastly, patiently patiently and I think prayerfully is important yeah Taylor talk about why this even this is like the first how exactly. is so important well and and we keep coming back to this really simple idea the Bible doesn't talk about dating it talks about evaluating so now that we know what it is we're evaluating we're evaluating a person that we're gonna spend the rest of our life with and the first person thing we're looking for is again making Jesus first Do you understand yeah. and now we're getting to the the how and now it's prayerfully. Why? Because, because prayer reminds us that God is in control and we are not. As you are in this season of evaluation, what you want to be doing is saying, God, I'm surrendering this process and I'm surrendering my future yeah. completely over to you. I'm going to do this prayerfully and carefully because I want God to be in control. I don't want to be in control. Here's a promise about what happens when you live your life with God in control. Romans 8, 28 says that we know that God causes all things to work together for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose. When you try to take control, I can't promise that it's going to work out good. When you try to do this your way, when you try to live this out with your playbook or the world's playbook of how you're going to find the person you're going to spend your life with, when you do it and you're the one driving the, the car, you want to be the quarterback, you want to be the coach. How many of, of illustrations got to give? If you want to be in control, I can't promise you a good outcome. But if you surrender control yeah. and you surrender this whole desire and want, God, I want to marry the woman that you have for me. God, I, if you pray prayers like that, God, would you bring the right man of God into my life that, that would help me fulfill your call? Would we be in unity together in that? You do this prayerfully, you let God be in control, I can promise you a good outcome. And, uh, and that's what scripture tells us. So we want to make sure that, that, we're, that we're stepping into this. Again, Jesus first, yeah. prayerfully. And, and what that does is it really shapes what influences us in relationship. And when we're not submitting it to God and surrendering it to God, it puts us in control of our life. It says, okay, well, I'm the one who makes this all happen for myself. And what that tends to do is it tends to increase fear and increase manipulation. So when it's me, I, I've got to impress. I've got to make things better. I, I'm, I'm in charge of it all. And God wants you to know today that it's not your job. It's not your job to control someone else. When you surrender to him, he works through it. So we're going to do it prayerfully. But not only that, with clarity. With clarity. And here's what Proverbs 29, 18 says. It says, where there is no vision, the people perish. Your season of evaluation needs clarity. It needs vision. That's great. Some of you, you, you enter into dating and there's no vision. Yeah. It, 
You, like, do you want to move forward? Do you actually want to get married? Uh, I think it's really odd sometimes that we get into these uh, relationships and that person we find out a couple months down doesn't even want to get married. Yeah. It's like, wait a second. Like, well, we've got to have the same vision not here. Funny. I'm sorry. It's not funny. But it's true. It's super sad. And that word perish, the people perish without vision, can also be translated, um, the people are unrestrained, the people are disturbed, the people are out of control. And for some of you, that is what your relationships look like. Constantly, why do I keep getting with someone and it's just out of control? There's no vision. There's no vision and it, it perfectly encapsulates what modern dating is. There's no next step. There's nothing we're working towards. And it tends you to live in a cycle of anxiety about the future. When 1 Corinthians actually tells you this, uh, chapter 14, it says that God is not a God of confusion, but a God of peace. God is not a God of confusion. And if your relationships look like this, confusion, then you've got to recognize today, maybe I need to evaluate this again and decide if this is the right person for me. Someone's blessed by that Come today. On. Come on. Babe, they got a football. Okay, well. Lauren got a football. Yes! Wow. Thank okay, you. Okay, but I have one hand. It's okay. I'll protect it. You know, the truth is that Taylor was a football player in high school, and I was a cheerleader. I was a fifth-round draft pick. Yeah. Didn't pan out. ACL injury. I was um, the cheerleader of the year. She was. It's my claim to fame. It's the only one I have. I wasn't in the draft. (laughs) I'm not lying. I was a cheerleader of the year. Um, Unrelated. Is it is it my turn to talk or your turn to talk? I think it's your turn. I'm kidding. Tell us, um, tell us about autonomy because I think that's what's next. Yeah, so we want to date with clarity, uh, which is about vision. And then it's autonomy. And I think this is great that, that dating is not a status. It's a process. Um, I think what happens in, in dating is, is all of a sudden you get into this evaluation process. You start going on some dates. And then all of a sudden the, the lines start to get blurred between me and you. Uh, what's my time versus what's your time? Your expectations of me versus my expectations of me. And things start to get, start to get blurred. It's these expectations of this boundary being crossed. Well, like now that we are this, I expect this from you. And we have to remind ourselves that until you're married, until two become one, you're two. I don't belong, you don't belong to him and she don't belong to you. Until you're married, you are two individuals. And the, 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 what's important about that is, is, is if you understand that you're supposed to maintain autonomy until the day you get married, what it does is it gives you some clarity on what boundaries you're not supposed to cross. The Bible says, and we'll talk about this next week, how a, 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 a woman's body, a wife's body is not hers, but once you get married, her body is for, is for her husband. And the Bible says the exact same thing. Men, your bodies do not belong to you. Your, your body is for your wife. And the Bible is being very explicit here, actually. And it's saying you are not supposed to deprive each other of sex once you're married. If one of you wants to have sex, you're supposed to be like, let's go. Like, like, like your body's not your own. Let's go for it. And it says it to both sides of the equation. But here's what happens. When we begin to blur the lines and we begin to get things out of order, what happens is that autonomy before marriage starts to get blurred. And, and, and so like things like moving in together. When you move in together before you get married, what you're doing is you're, is you're getting things out of order and you're losing your autonomy before you step into covenant. And when you lose your autonomy before you step into covenant, covenant you lose the clarity you need for the evaluation process. Yeah. If you can't freely get up and leave, then you're already deeper in the relationship than you're supposed to be before you're married. Yeah. If you're financially tied together, if you're, if you're roommate, if like... If you cross these boundaries too soon, yeah. it, it blurs the lines and makes it a it's lot really harder for you to go, you know what? This isn't going to work out. Oh my gosh, I have clarity. Because you'll wake up one day, you've experienced this, you've broken up with someone, or you've, all of a sudden clarity is there, you're like, oh, this isn't going to work out. That clarity is not a bad thing, it's a good thing. Clarity is kindness. And once you have that clarity, if you don't have autonomy, you can't actually walk away. And if you can't really walk good. away, then you're going to damage your future. And so you need to date, you need to maintain autonomy. Yeah, it's You need to maintain clear boundaries. You need to ma- maintain that separation. 
It's yeah. important. And the truth is, is that that forces you to actually evaluate. If you know that just tomorrow he or she could just get up and say, I'm done with this, well, that forces you to say, okay, we're in the process of evaluating. Yeah. I can't just wait around. She's not always going to wait for you. I want to, that's a word for somebody. Yeah. She's not just going to wait for you while you, uh, I know that she's wonderful and she loves you and she loves God, but you need to just decide if you're going to commit or not. Yeah. Give her the grace, right? Give her the, that gracious response of saying, I'm, I, I'm not ready. And allow her to make a decision based off of her future, not just waiting on yours for you to make up your own mind. So uh -oh. make it I, I think make I need it to, I think the ball needs to pass. I think that was a good pass moment, babe. I, if I throw this, then we got coffees on it, the platform. Yeah, we'll just there you go. hold it. Yeah. <laughs> Let's just hold it. But, oh, okay, we're done with the ball. Okay. Lauren's like, Thank give you. it to me. You guys are yeah. done with this. Yeah. You're making this awkward. Yeah. Um, the next one is this, is um, purity. Yeah, it, it feeds right off of it. Yeah, exactly. So purity, um, we know that sex uh, very literally distorts the process. Um, this is true. There is no such thing scientifically as casual sex. Okay, so yeah, you can go look it shocking. up. Um, it, it's not like a church thing. I, it's really funny. I was a part of a, I'm a part of a mom's group. And uh, one of the moms Facebook wrote. Facebook mom's group. A Facebook mom's group. Yeah. That's the age I am. Facebook. Okay. But I still have. Facebook. Yeah, it's Facebook. Okay. But anyways, you got to be in it if you want to know, like, you know, what's happening in the neighborhood. Okay. Yeah. So anyways, I'm on the group and there's an entry from like an aunt and she's really worried, worried about her daughter who um, is dating a guy and she's like, and you know, I think it's a cult because they actually believe you're supposed to wait to have sex until marriage. So she's very concerned her, her niece is in a cult. And um, I was like, um, just so you know, uh, like these values are Christian tradition. This isn't cult-like. This isn't a cult. Yeah, yeah, that's the only comment I've ever left on that group. Yeah. I probably will never leave a comment again, but it's a different story. But I uh, think, go yeah. ahead. Well, I think when we, when we talk about purity, some of us, you're in the room, and the majority of us have crossed this line. Most of us have, have, have had sex, premarital sex, sex before marriage. And right now, as I'm talking, you've already decided in your heart, yeah, 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 yeah. And you're just letting it glaze over. And you're saying, that's not for me. That's old school. That's back in the book. And, and I just want to be kind of clear. Um, when we don't, blessed are the pure in spirit, for they will inherit the earth, Jesus says. Yeah. And there is purity and righteousness. And if you want to live a life that honors and pleases God and has his blessing and protection on it, then a life of holiness and purity is, a, is, the, is the life that you're looking for. And, and, but to get there, it's going to take some of us going, you know what, I've crossed the line. But you know what's so good about God? Is he's a forgiving God. Yeah. And, and, and you might feel like, well, I've already, we've already gone yeah. too far. And, and, and my boyfriend and I or my girlfriend and I, we're already doing that or we're already living together. We've already crossed these lines. And I'll say that, that you're, not, you're never too far gone to turn and to begin really to, to, to submit and obey God. These aren't suggestions. The Bible says for the wages of sin is death. And what we're saying today isn't just some like bygone era type uh, advice. What we are offering is life and life more abundantly according to the words of Jesus. And I just want to encourage you to, to, to if you have crossed these lines, to re receive what God has and say, you know what? I can begin a, a life of purity. I can begin to walk this out. And for some of us, there could be some people in the room, and Chris and I, we've actually done this a lot. I love what, um, I'm going to go backwards. We didn't use the scripture. It's 1 Corinthians 7, verse 9. It says, it's better to marry than to burn with passion. And there's people in the room today, there's people watching online, and here's where you are. You both love Jesus. You both have a, a, a character. You know that this is someone you want to spend the rest of your life with. You've got the chemistry. In fact, the chemistry is so strong, you can't keep your hands off of each other. The idea of living pure sounds impossible. If that's you, and you love Jesus, she loves Jesus, you guys love, and you want to put God first, I just want to invite you to go ahead and pull the trigger and get married. Yeah. Honor God. There's people in this room right now who, who, who you're living together, and, and, and I want you to have a serious conversation about, you know what? 
We want to honor God. It's time to honor him and to put him first. It's time to pull the trigger. Chris and I, we've married so many friends. Like, we can, we can go to the park and just do it. Like, let's just, like, get you married. Let's put God first. Elope. Have a party do later. Yeah. Don't, don't allow the process of a wedding keep you from living uh, in, in, in righteousness and purity before God. So and good. I would just encourage you to put God first. It's better to marry than to burn with passion. And, and I just think that when we talk about purity... Uh, you want to put God first. And so you need to make sure that sex is out of the equation. Uh, and, and, and if you cross that boundary, you need, to, you need to back it up and say, hey, you know what? That's off the table uh, because I want to maintain my autonomy. Yeah. And I, want to, I want to honor God. Yeah. And if you're with someone who really loves God, they'll respect that. And they'll, they'll actually want you more because of it. And, uh, and hopefully that's what happens. If not, if, if they're like, well, get out of here. And it's like, oh, it turns out God is not their finish line. Turns out we don't have the same vision. It's really good. Yeah. I love that so much. I talked a lot there, sorry. No, I think that's beautiful. It's so helpful. I, I think maybe we'll have some weddings in the lobby today. I am, I'll just do it. <laughs> Let's do it. You let I'm me all know. Out. You let me know. We're so excited about that. When people do that, though, it really is. It's actually one of my favorite Super things special. as a pastor yeah. is when people, when they admit that they've been living in sin and they repent and they say, we want to do things right. I'm telling you today, there is a special blessing that comes upon you and your relationship and your life. Even things that you think are unrelated, like finances. You're like, oh, now that I honor God, it's not just that this one area of my life gets better. It's that every area of my exactly. life gets better when I obey Amen. and submit to God. And so we're going to live with purity. And the next play is that you want to operate in this evaluation process graciously. Graciously. You need to ask yourself, am I just doing this to impress her or am I doing this because I want to bless her? At the end of it all, let's say you are dating and you don't end up marrying that person. You find in the evaluation that you're not right for one another. Do they leave saying, wow, that person actually, even though it didn't work out, they were a blessing to me. I learned a lot from that season. Most of us, it's a blessing that they're gone. But what if you could be the kind of person? <laughs> let's be honest, oh. right? Thank you for leaving. This blessed me. You know, you don't even know it right now. Thank you. Next. Thank you, blessed. Thank, Thank you, blessed. blessed. Okay. <laughs> That's stupid. I like it. But yeah, it is a great aim in dating, though, because um, the, we're, we're children of God, right? We're brothers and sisters. If we want to get really spiritual with it, like... Even that person that you're dating who was a believer and you guys broke up, like they're going to be in heaven, totally. you know? And if you are always living just to be impressive, you're going to start to develop a relationship not based on who you really are and who God has called you to be. And, and you want people to just be better. Like that's my goal is that whoever's around me, I hope that my presence is a blessing when I'm with them, not a burden, you know? And the same goes for dating. Yeah. I think graciously is such an important thing. You are not dating someone because of what you can get from them. Yeah. You're evaluating if this is the person you're gonna spend the rest of your life with. And if it's not the person you're gonna spend the rest of your life with, then hopefully it's someone, it's someone else's wife, it's someone else's husband. And are you treating her, are you treating him the yeah. way you're hoping your future spouse is being treated? Date graciously. Yeah. Don't use, don't, don't just try to impress. Be a blessing. Yeah. Add value to their life. And I just don't think that every time someone begins the evaluation process that it has to end with drama and heartbreak. Yeah. I just think it can end with like, hey, we both know this isn't going to work out the way th th that we've evaluated. Now it's time to, to move on and see. It doesn't have to be this big yeah. drama. And I, I just think that the, the graciousness is so important. Yeah. And, so, um, we want to want to be a blessing. So not true. Trying to impress someone. And yeah. when you when you aim to bless and not uh, impress, you don't obsess over every little thing you do and they do. Yeah. You stop obsessing. Yeah. Like I hope you I hope she I hope she thinks this about me. You start putting you stop obsessing about putting on a front. Then people actually get to know the real you. Uh, one of the things that's that That's what you want. That's you what want you someone want. to fall in love with the real you. Yeah. 
And one of the things I remember when, when Taylor and I uh, got married, I was really grateful because we, dating, we actually really got to know each other. We did. Like, I, there were no surprises when we got married. In fact, I think because we actually had a tumultuous dating experience. It's a good word. Yeah. It's a gracious word. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, is. Was, it, it is. I was a not a good boyfriend. You were a bad boyfriend. I was a bad boyfriend. You're an incredible husband. Yeah, I, but I was a bad boyfriend. My eyes were shifty. My, I, my attention was all over the place. I, I, I was, I w- it was really hard for me to lock in. Dating wasn't just an evaluation process. It, was, uh, I, I, it wasn't that for me. It was, well, I, I, I got her attention. Can I get other people's attention? Yeah. And insecurities like that, which people have them, um, can can distract you and they, I probably honest we talked about this last night yeah we started dating and we went you know I did get out of the friend zone thank God um, but we agree that either we started dating too soon or we didn't get married soon enough uh, yeah. although we were God's will for each other and it worked out there were seasons that although we were God's will we were out of God's will yeah. Because I didn't treat her the way she deserved to be treated because I had too many insecurities and too many sin problems in my own life for her to be respected and treated the way she needed to be treated. So I hurt her a lot. And, and, and we really learned a lot about each other. We fought incredibly. We both, I mean, we both hurt each other. But the reality is, 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 that, is that we, we always had Jesus first in our lives. Yeah. And because Jesus was always first, our repentance and, and, our, and our shifting back to him when we would do that individually, we eventually broke up. Uh, yeah. Broke up for a significant Almost portion of time. Almost a year. Yeah. And it was in that season where we had to establish our identity in Jesus and not our identity in another person. Yeah. And some of us were looking for someone else to complete us. We're, we're thinking that re- the relationship is going to kind of fill the gaps of your life. But I, I want you to know today that you're going to get there and you're still going to find that emptiness. You're still going to find that there's no amount of kind words he could say that would make you feel valued because your value issue, it, it's not his to take care of. It's actually God's. And if you say, God, I want you to be the Lord of my life. I want you to show me that I'm valued, that I'm loved. If you know who you are in Jesus, you'll always have the right aim. You'll always be able to bring your best to the table in your relationship. And one of the things I think as we kind of get ready to wrap up here is that we often didn't allow our community to speak into our relationship. And that's the next one is that you've got to evaluate. You've got to date in community. Yeah. I think this is so practical. Uh, the, the Bible is pretty clear in Proverbs 11 where there is no guidance uh, a people falls, but in an abundance of counselors, there is safety. Hmm. And in a lot of us, we go down the road with someone and our hearts are not being protected. Because honestly, like, some of us, we find ourselves in these, these bad cycles. You use a dating app, and dating apps are great, but the problem is that the beginning of a relationship is kind of at random or based on an algorithm. You start some sort of a messaging service, and then you kind of start building this chemistry and this connection online. And then that chemistry kind of builds good enough, and then you end up going to dinner or getting coffee or breakfast. Ladies, I'd encourage you to make sure that that guy starts in daylight hours. Let's do coffee or lunch first, figure out, let's evaluate at the right time. But then what happens is that you go on a first date, a second date, a third date, and now you start thinking, maybe my friends should meet this guy. Maybe my friends should meet this girl. And what's happened is you've actually gone so far down the road that you've already developed feelings for someone. Then when you introduce them to your friends or family and they see the red flags that you've ignored, when they bring them up, you ignore your friends. You would, you would ignore the godly counsel God brought you. Why? Because you started the whole process alone in secrecy. Can we make a rule? No secret dates. Don't go on a secret date. Don't meet someone and go on a date without your friend knowing. I don't care if it's just that first evaluation. I don't care if it's like, hey, I got this, I got this, there's this coworker, we're gonna go grab coffee. Let a friend know and say, I want you to ask me about how it went. 
and, 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 and just keep it in community. And I, I promise you, your friends can help you see the things. They can see the, the cycles of other relationships that didn't work out. They, yeah. they can help bring clarity to your vision. What are you looking for? They've asked you these questions. So when, so when you go on the date, the friend will be like, you know, like she doesn't line up on any of the things you said you're looking for. Maybe this isn't what you want. And it can give you that confidence to say, you're right. Let's cut this evaluation process off. Let's not, let's not have a second date. And I think that that will bring so much freedom. You don't need to carry this alone. Yeah. So don't. Yeah, that's beautiful. Do this in community. Yeah. Have friends, have brothers, have sisters, have pastors, have leaders, have family who you know has got your back. And it can't just be any community because then you got a community who's like, yeah, there's all sorts of bad community out there. We give all sorts of really ungodly yeah. advice about what dating should look like. Yeah. And, 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 and you really want to take advice from people who have a marriage or have a relationship or have the same aim that you do. And that's a whole different thing I could talk about. But yeah. Community, it's, 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 it's so important. Yeah. And I, I would think, um, Taylor, even that you and I, as we get ready to close here, because the last one is that you want to um, date patiently, patiently. And that means that you're not in a rush right away. You want to see them in different seasons. Wait long enough to see them in the winter. Wait long enough to see them in the summer. The summer, you know? Like, go to Coney Island, go to the beach, and be like, yeah, okay. Um, no, not really like that. But you're waiting long enough to see them when they so get like angry. The not shaving your legs thing that wasn't a winter only thing, that was like a <laughs> summer thing too? Got it. <laughs> Loud and clear. <laughs> yeah. Got it. I just don't do that. Don't believe in that. Got it. Good yeah. for you. This is a marriage tip. Girls, I, sh I shave my legs every time I shower. This is going to transform psychosis. your marriage. Yeah. I do every time I shower. And then when you do it every time you shower, it's not even that much. Like, it's not that big of a deal. Does it really take that long? I swear. Like, how long I are your swear. legs? This girl shaves her legs like a like a butcher shaves like turkey meat before they make you a deli. You know, like, you're the bodega. You're like, yeah, I'll get a turkey sandwich. Like, grah, grah, grah. I'm like, what are you doing with that razor blade? Like, I'm a pro. I'm a professional what is now. It's dangerous. Anyways, that's another point. That's for next week. Marriage. Um, but I will say this. You know, you, you've got to see them in seasons. Seasons. You got to see them when they get low. You got to see them when they're really happy. You got to see them, you know, like wait long enough to see who they really are. Because sometimes yeah. when you, you make all the decisions right at the beginning, you can find, oh my, oh my goodness, wait, like I was madly in love. I was crazy in love. And that blinded me from evaluating. I didn't see them on their bad days yet. And so I want to encourage you to do that. But, but for Taylor and I, as we kind of wrap up today, I'm thinking of when we got back together. So we were broken up for almost a year. That was a season for both of us where God was really working on our hearts and God was um, healing us. He was telling us who we were in Him. He was establishing our identity in, in Him. And I remember when we started to get back together and we were like, okay, are we going to do this again? And I remember telling Taylor, I was like, uh, we're not dating unless you're ready to get married. Like we had already dated. I, I already knew like if you're ready to get married, let me know. Then we can date. You know, that's kind of just where we were. But I remember inviting our families into the conversation that time. Yeah. And it was a big blessing to have the voices of our families speaking into us and saying, hey, but don't you remember? This was really hard. We don't want to see you get your heart broken again. And, and we want to make sure. And in fact, what I did actually is I, I made sure that my dad, that I had his blessing to date Taylor again. Because my dad had to see me go through the heartbreak. And he was my pastor. He is my pastor. And I, and I said, Dad, you know what? Like, I'm not going to date until I have your approval again. And if you say that this is okay. And I would encourage you. There's such a culture now of, of dating without blessing and without approval from the, the wisest voices in your life. I would encourage you to ask your parents again if you trust them. Totally. Hey, I want you to meet. I want, I want their blessing. Uh, if, if someone wants to marry you, they better have the blessing of your family family of your parents that is not just an old idea totally who do you think you are you just walked into their life three months ago and you just want to get married and not even talk to her father are you kidding me the man that raised her who spoke life into her 
And so I decided, and so I called my dad, I'll never forget calling him, Taylor, he wanted to date me again. And I said, Dad, I, I gotta ask you something. And my dad actually, he was on a, a retreat he takes every January, and God spoke to my dad while my dad was on the retreat. And he reminded him of a, a story a long time ago. He'd met Taylor's grandfather and his grandfather had such an impression on my dad and he spoke life over my dad as a young minister. Taylor's grandfather pastored a really great church. And, and God reminded my dad of that moment and he spoke to my dad and he said, every prayer that Taylor's grandfather prayed over him, I'm going to fulfill. And Taylor and Kristen are gonna get married and they're gonna do ministry together. So that morning, my dad wakes up from this dream and God speaks to him. That morning, I call my dad to ask him for permission to date Taylor again. And I remember getting on the phone and saying, Dad, I, I gotta ask you something. Before I said anything, he said, Kristen, I just want you to know that God spoke to me and if you wanna date Taylor again, you have my blessing. Let me tell you, when you've got the blessing of community, when you've got God's blessing on you, it, you there, there's nothing like it. And he didn't tell us that story until the night before our wedding. And of course, we were just weeping, but it was special to see how when we got under, under the covering, God brought healing. And God brought everything full circle. And today, you know, as we kind of closed, I was thinking this, that some of us, we may have like we've talked and shared our stories, maybe you've just had your heart broken. And quite honestly, you've been injured on the field. <gasps> yes, I went there. <laughs> I am committed to the theme. But you have, you've, you've found yourself in, in dating and you've been heartbroken and someone, they betrayed you. And, and, and you felt like, why do I keep attracting the same person over and over again? And I came to tell you today that God wants to heal your heart. Come on, amen. That God wants to give you a yeah. fresh vision, a new vision for this season of your life. It doesn't have to be toxic. You can start to live in the blessing of Almighty God. He wants to take you and make you brand new. But not only that, here's my last one. You've got to stop writing your own playbook. And you've got to allow God to write the story of your life. Come on, somebody. He's a good God. Amen. And, 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 and now as we close, I, I, I just feel led, we talked about this before, to pray for, for, for two people. Uh, there's people who are in, the, in this room right now and you're in a dating relationship. And something we've said flies directly in the face of the way that you're actually dating right now. And if that's you, if you've crossed the line, if you've, if you've uh, broken the threshold, if you've stepped out of purity or you're just not doing it God's way, you're following your own play. If that's you and, and, and you are dating someone, I wanna pray for you and I wanna pray that God would speak to you and that there would be a grace. There's no condemnation in Christ. Everything we're talking about today is, is, about a life, is about the life he's offering us. And it does mean though that some of us, we're gonna have to repent. What does the word repent mean? It's not a scary word. It's not a word of coming down upon you. The word repent simply means I've gotta turn from doing it my way and I'm gonna turn my life, I repent, and now God, I'm gonna do it your way. And there's some couples here, you need to have a conversation. And you need to make sure that, yeah, hey, we have the same end goal. We're trying to get to heaven together. You know, like, like you, you got to have some conversations about like, hey, there's some boundaries we've crossed. And we, I'd like to honor God until we're ready to make that decision to get married. And, and I really want to encourage you. So first, I want to pray for the couple. And I want to pray for clarity and wisdom about this evaluation process. And then I want to pray for healing for the, for, for the single person who, who you are in a season of heartbreak or your season of looking. I want to pray that God would give you wisdom and clarity and all the things that we're praying. Amen? Hey, come on. Chris and I are going to stand. You stay seated. But with your heads bowed and your eyes closed, first, I want to pray for those couples. And if you're here today with that couple, with that significant other, you can hold their hand. Uh, but Lord, right now, Lord, we just lift up every single dating couple who's here today. The engaged couple, the dating couple, the couple that is yet to step into covenant marriage, God. And I just pray right now that your hand of blessing and protection would be upon them. God, I pray that as they are in this season of evaluating, Lord, that you would give them clarity, that you would give them conviction, you'd give them courage to do what you want them to do. 
Holy Spirit, I pray healing over any brokenness in their relationship. And God, I pray that as they put you first, God, as they honor you, that you would work everything together for their good. God, give them courage and clarity as they have these conversations. Bless them, Lord, as they put you first. In Jesus' name. Amen. And if you're here today and you'd say, hey, that's me. I've just, I've been heartbroken through this. What, whatever it is, we can keep our heads bowed. I don't want everyone to know exactly who's dealing with it today. But if that's you today, I want to pray for you. You'd say, hey, that's me, Pastor. I've been heartbroken. I'm in a season of just feeling almost like I've been backstabbed. I've been betrayed. I'm wondering if there's a future for me in relationships. If that's you, just lift your hand so I can know who I'm praying for today. I see you. I see you. I see you, hands going up all over the room. Lord, I pray right now that your people today, that they would give you their whole heart, God, and that you would take it and that you would mend it, God, that you would piece it back together. But not just that, Lord. I ask for a brand new heart in Jesus' name. God, I pray that you would break soul ties, God. I pray, Lord, that the trauma, God, that some people have been submitted to and the abuse today, God, I ask for healing over their minds, healing God over their hearts, healing Lord over their bodies, Lord. And I speak life over them, God, that as they surrender it all to you, Jesus, they would find that you are a good God who can handle their heart, Lord, and you have a future for them, God. So I pray a blessing, God, over future marriages in the room. I pray a blessing, God, over future dating season in the room, Lord. I pray that those, God, today who'd say, Lord, we submit our lives to you, God, that they would find your blessing, they would find your favor, God, that they would find your provision, God. We are going to say, Lord, you're going to set us apart, and we're going to honor you, Lord. I believe that there's going to be a new wave of couples who honor the Lord and their relationships, and as they say yes and they get married, the Lord is going to rise up a new generation of marriages that actually it starts with you. The new generational blessing starts with you. You're not going to end in divorce like your parents or your grandparents. This is a house and you are a person who's going to walk in wholeness in Jesus' name. If you receive it, why don't you say amen? Amen. Amen. Come on. I believe that was a prophetic statement, a prophetic prayer. And we never leave a service, never leave an opportunity for you to make the first decision. And the first decision is everything we're talking about, all the blessing that you want on God, God, all of the blessing you want from God on your life and your relationship begins with a relationship with Him. There's no faking it. Are you in a relationship with Jesus or are you not? Is He your Lord and Savior? What does that mean? Is He in charge of your life or are you in charge of your life? If you're in charge, I can't guarantee the outcome. But if you would surrender your life to Jesus, the Bible says that all you have to do is confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, then you're saved. And that's the first decision of many as you begin your walk with God. And today, maybe you've prayed that prayer before. Maybe you've given your life to Jesus. Maybe you've never done it before. But today is a good day to start again. So one more time with your head bowed, your eyes closed. If you need to give your life back to Jesus today on the count of three, would you just lift up your hand from the front to the back saying, hey, pastor, that's me. One, two, three. Yes, I see you and I see you and I see you and I see you. Yes, so many friends saying, God, I want to put you first. I want you to be in charge of my life. With your hands lifted up, I want you to begin to tell God in your own words, God, I'm giving you my life. I want to give you everything today. I want you to be in charge. You are my Lord. You are my Savior. I don't want to just live for me. I want your will to be done in and through my life. Use your own words. Say, God, I'm sorry for living for myself but today I choose to live for you tell them this say God I give you all of me in exchange for all of you I want all of you God so you can use me God I'm yours in Jesus name everybody said amen 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 come on we make some noise for our friends who are praying this prayer hey what a special Sunday it's if you just prayed that prayer man the Bible says there is a party in heaven and we want to celebrate amen What a word. Thank you, Pastors Taylor and Kristen. If you just prayed that prayer, please let us know so that we can celebrate with you. Simply text CONNECT to 66866. And thank you for joining us today. If you've been blessed by today's service, please consider supporting the ministry with your generosity. See all the ways to give below. Trinity, we love you, and we will see you next Sunday. Have a blessed week.